sir may i introduce uh, professor yeah, yeah 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 most uh, welcome most welcome so, okay sir i am dr ray vengadesh uh, yeah please uh, assistant professor of mathematics from avvm sri pushpam college pundi tanjavur tanjavur district of uh, tamil nadu uh, and uh, i am very proud to introduce uh, the professor uh, s arman sir and uh, uh, he is uh, now working as a emeritus professor in um, in kalasalingam university uh, uh, krishnan kovil and uh, he wrote many books uh, uh, for text uh, it has uh, this has uh, textbooks in many uh, colleges and universities of tamil nadu uh, even in my bookshelf itself uh, there are some eight to nine books of him of that uh, such an eminent professor is going to deliver a lecture on chess board covering problems i uh, over due to professor arman sir so thank you very much <coughs> So my topic today is domination in graphs, actually, but the subject has Indian origin. Domination has an Indian origin from the bustles coming from chessboard. So I use the chessboard covering problem to motivate the concept of domination, and even within the chessboard covering, we have several interesting, simple problems, simple-looking problems which remain unsolved. that's what i would like to start in the beginning okay so you know a chess board let us take a useful eight class eight chess board we take chess board piece like queen or knight or rook whatever it is take a chess board piece so starting from a squares of the chess board and the chess board piece i am going to construct a graph My graph has the cells of the chessboard. If you eight class eight board, you have sixty four cells in the chessboard. They are the vertex. They are the vertex set for the graph. And two vertices V I and V J are adjacent. If the chess piece at V I can move to V J in a single move, that's all. So it depends on the chess piece and the chessboard. Okay. For example, this is the uh, queen. A queen here can move to all the cells in horizontal, vertical, diagonal. So this vertex is adjacent to the three vertices here, and the seven vertices in this column, seven vertex in this row, and so on. So this queen is adjacent to so many vertices. So this vertex is adjacent to all these vertices. So starting from the chessboard and queen, I get the graph. I call it queen's graph. Similarly, you can define knight's graph. Okay. For example, you put a knight in one cell, then to, to whichever cell the knight can move in a single move, you put a knight. That's it. So I get the graph starting from the chessboard and the chess piece. Okay. So that's the thing. So Queen's graph. Let me first concentrate. So I have the chessboard cells as vertices, and two vertices are adjacent. If Queen at V A can move to V J in a single move. Okay. With this, I ask for what is the minimum number of queens needed to cover all the cells of the chessboard? What is the minimum number of queens to be placed on the chessboard? Such that every cell is occupied by a queen or attacked by a queen. That's all. Okay, every cell is occupied by a queen or attacked by a queen. What's the minimum number of queens to be placed? That's a question. Of course, if you put one queen in each row, it trivially satisfies the problem, but that that may not be the minimum. Are you, sir? Is it two? Answer, huh? Five. Is it two? Two, two will not be enough. Five, five. Five is the correct answer for eight class eight board. A queen in a white uh, place uh -huh. cannot go to a queen. Uh, cannot go to a black uh, hole. Correct. Black square. Correct. It will move to only to white. Only to white. Only to white. But not so all the whites. But not all the whites. Not all the whites. Yeah. So. The solution. So if we find out how many queens are required to cover uh, white uh, squares and uh -huh. how many queens are required 
for uh, similarly for black squares we will get the total answer this is here i have put everything in the white cell it covers the whole thing okay you look at this solution i have placed five queens on the chess board you see that every cell is covered now because the queen can move diagonally horizontally vertically any number of steps yes it cannot just jump it cannot jump it cannot jump it is single move it should go to the place in a single move for example if you take this this cell for example there is no the column this queen can come and uh, move. whereas if i put a thing here there is nothing in the row nothing in the column but still this queen can come and attack here okay so this five queens will cover the entire chess board less than 5 is not possible it has been proved for the standard 8 cross 8 chess board five queens are needed five queens are the minimum number of queens needed to cover all the cells of the chess board okay so this here is every vertex which is not occupied by a queen is adjacent to a queen adjacent means it can move it does an edge okay so this vertices on which queen is placed i denote it by s capital s then every vertex not in s is adjacent to a vertex in s then in other words in the graph theory language the s the five vertices where the queens are placed forms a dominating set of the queens graph okay the five vertices where you have placed the queen forms a dominating set for the queens graph so for the queen's graph of 8 cross 8 board gamma is 5 okay fine here the queens can attack each other okay the queens can attack each other i can ask the question can you place five queens such that the queens do not attack each other but still cover all the cells of the board that means i want an independent set which still covers all the cells that's also possible for 8 cross 8 and here is the solution i have again five queens on the board no queen attacks another queen okay here no queen attacks another queen but every cell is covered by by one of the queens every cell is covered by one of the queens for example if there is uh, let us take the second row where there is no queen on the second row see this is covered this is covered this is covered by the diagonal this is diagonal cover no problem up to this this is covered by this diagonal and not this to no problem the rows are there like that okay. so here are five queens which do not attack each other mutually and still it covers the entire uh, chess board in graph theory language this is called independent dominating set okay this is an independent dominating set the five vertices are mutually non adjacent and it dominates the whole graph okay i can then ask the next question what's the maximum number of non attacking queens you can place on this chess board what do you think is the answer what's the maximum number of non attacking queens that can be placed on the chess board this corresponds to independence number in graph theory language the maximum cardinality of an independent set okay so what is the maximum number of mutually non attacking queens we can place on the chess board eight cross eight chess board same five ha huh? same, same five mm -hmm. it's much more than that no oh, eight queen can be placed yeah here is the solution where i have placed eight queens No queen attacks another queen. And that's the maximum. Here, more or less, the ninth movement is uh, followed. See, from here another night, another set of night movements. So eight uh, queens I, are placed. Excuse me, sir. I do not understand. What do you mean by maximum number of queens and attacking? Like 
What if we place uh, more than this? We have what to place eight queens on the chessboard. No two queens should attack each other, but eight queens should cover all the cells of the board. Uh, that's not needed now. What's the maximum number of queens to be placed on the chessboard so that no two of them attack each other? That's all. What's the maximum number of queens that you can place such that no two queens attack each other? Okay. Yes, sir. How many such ways are there to put these queens? What's your question? How many such ways are there to put queens here? Yes, we have eight, eight queens, okay. And no, no queen attacks another queen, okay? This queen... Because in this row, in this column, in this diagonal, nothing is there. So this queen cannot attack another queen. Similarly, every queen here cannot attack another queen. And also their position is important, right? Yes, yes. yes. How to place is the question. That is the problem. That's the research question. Yeah. Uh, Solonis sir is asking uh, how many such ways we can arrange these. Uh, that is not known. That is not known. Okay. That is not known. Okay. No, I okay. think so. That is known. There are ninety-two ways. I think uh, there is a recurrence relation, and yeah, for the independent. Uh, for non-attacking queens, this okay. eight queen problem. That's the eight queen problem. Thing. Yeah, that's the maximum independent set problem. Yeah. That's the maximum independent set problem in graph language. A beta not set, okay? Okay. A beta not set. Maximum cardinality of an independent set in the Queen's graph. And how many independent sets are there, you are asking? Ah. How many maximum independent sets are there? Oh, in general graph, uh, that is not known. That is Even for a general graph, it is not known. Yeah. And uh, there is one more uh, question in the chat. Right. So, what, what do you mean by attack? Attack means, uh, see, uh, this is the a queen usual can chess move game. Cell in a single move. Yeah, yeah. See. Queen can move single. Uh, single cell step, it can move. Yeah. yeah. So this queen cannot move to this place in a single step. Yeah. So they are non adjacent. In graph language, they are non adjacent vertices. So it's a set, set of mutually non adjacent vertices, are equal to an independent set. Okay. Yes. Now, so this is com comes to domination number, independence number, and independent domination number. Okay. So this is a situation known results as on today regarding the independent domination number and independence domination number of the Queen's graph. Up to 20, we have some answer okay and the smallest unsolved case is for the gamma 20 is the smallest unsolved case the number is known to be either 10 or 11 it is 10 or 11 you are not able to fix okay sir what is n gamma n and iqn n is the n class n chess board Gamma QN is domination number of the uh, graph, the chessboard graph. That is the minimum number of queens to be placed to cover all the cells. And IQN is the minimum number of non-attacking queens to be placed on the cell to cover this entire chessboard. Okay? See, for N, for example, is you, you, for N equal to 8, this figure tells you that i is 5, i of qn is 5. I can place 5 non-attacking queens that covers all the cells, and that is the minimum. So this says i of q8 is 5. Okay, and this tells gamma q8 is 5. Five queens are needed to cover the entire cell, all the cells. So this is the situation as on today. For gamma, smallest unsolved case is 20 cross 20 board. For 20 cross 20 board, it has been proved that 
the number of cells required, number of queens required to be placed is either 10 or 11. That's all. We are not able to say it is 10. If you, if you, if you can prove that 10 cells placed anywhere in the board cannot cover the whole thing, then the answer will be 11. So this is where we are standing for an equal 20. For I, even the 19 case is the problem. And the smallest place where, and, where I, gamma and I are different comes when 12. For the 12, six queens are enough to cover the board. For, for independent placement, we need seven queens. So here's the first place where gamma and I are become unequal. Okay. So this is the current status of the parameter for the queen's graph uh, for gamma and I. Okay. And this most, this is for 11 class 11 board. See that the number keeps at, keeps at 5 up to 8, 9, 10, 11. That's very, very interesting. The pattern is not very, very comfortable. See, it starts from 2, then 3, Four comes, then five is there for nine boards, for eight to 11, then six, seven, eight. Then again, nine comes repeated four times, then 10 after the pseudo. Now. The pattern is very bustle, bustling. Let's say you put the solution for the 11 cross 11 board here. Uh, sir, as, uh, as n become larger, number of vertices in the graph uh, may be very huge. So yes, I'm it, just it uh, eager to know how people uh, work on this problem to determine exact numbers. See, they are no, mostly trying to use dynamic programming technique. Some sort of dynamic programming and use, use of computers to yeah. go for large things. Can for hold replacement, it? they do it, then they try to argue by a degree and other things to get their other inequality. Okay. The most uh, surprising result is this is an excellent survey paper that has come in 2018 in a book edited by Hedatnami, Haynes, and Gera in uh, 2018. The survey, is, the title itself is interesting Queens around the world in 25 years. What has happened to the Queens problem in the past 25 years? There's a survey paper where you can get all the information about. What has happened on the Queen's domination problem? Okay. It's an excellent survey of Queen's graph that has, that has been developed during the past 25 years across the world. Okay. The most general result that has come on this graph is the most remarkable result that has come so far on this topic. In 2001, it has been published. They have proved that up to n equal to 120, gamma is either known or it's one of the two consecutive integers. Very surprising, up to n equal to 120. They have proved that the value is exactly known or it's one of the two consecutive integers. That's what I have shown here in this table. See, it is known up to 19. For 20, it's one of the two consecutive indices, 10 and 11. And they have proved that such a phenomena is there up to n equal to 120. This is the latest situation about this problem. Up to n equal to 120, it has been proved that the value is precisely computed, and it is proved that it's one of the two consecutive integers. So this is the status of the problem about gamma qn the domination number of the queen's graph, okay? But the surprising unsolved problem is, let me skip this for the present and come back. What has happened to that problem? It's not placed here. It is in the other, other PPT. Okay, doesn't matter. I'll come back to that other PPT. Or it may come at the later stage, let me say.
Oh, it will come in the other 50. We shall, we shall wait. OK. Fine. Now, the most difficult problem for the stress board is the ninth piece. What is the, if you take the ninth graph, what is gamma? Kn, I will call Kn, Ki bracket n or ninth n. So for Knight's graph, none of the parameters is easy to compute. It seems to be a very difficult problem. Because Knight movement, you know, is little complicated. Two steps, uh, yeah, so, 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 two steps horizontal, one down, or uh, one horizontal and two, two up or down. So that's a nice movement. So the entire theory remains not much explored for Knight's nice domination. Okay. Another problem, which has very beautiful Indian origin, is about whether the Knight's nice graph is Hamiltonian or not. Hamiltonian means a cycle that covers all the vertices of the graph. This is eight class eight board I have taken as an example. Okay, so if you start from the square one, by night I can come to two, then three, I travel like this, four, five, and so on. Then I come to 63, 64, and back to one. This is the Hamilton cycle for the Knight's graph of the eight cross eight board. So for what values of n, the Knight's graph is Hamiltonian. And what's an algorithm? See, this algorithm for the Knight's problem came somewhere in 1850s, somewhere in the 19th century. Yes, 1823. Wamsdorf have a heuristic algorithm to solve the Hamiltonian cycle problem for the chess board, for the n Cassian chess board. Okay, Hamiltonian cycle problem. Not all Knight's uh, nice graphs are Hamiltonian. Okay, for example, take the two cross to night, two cross to board. Knight graph is just simply for isolated vertices. Now two cross to board. No, no, from no cell in night, night can move, right? What's the, for the two cross to chess board? What's the Knight's nice graph? Four isolated vertices, right? And the four cells from the vertex set. No knight can move to another another cell. We only four cross four, two cross to board. For the three cross three board, take the middle vertex. That's an isolated vertex. In the knight's graph, the middle vertex will be isolated. Okay. For the three cross three board. Fine. So you see, for not 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 for all values of n. The Knight's graph is Hamiltonian. So there are some algorithms available to check whether the Knight's graph is Hamiltonian. So we have a solution for the 8 cross 8 chess board. But surprisingly, there is a sloga in Sanskrit which gives a solution to the Hamiltonian problem of the Knight board, Knight for the eight class eight chess board, uh, it is, the book name is called Kavya Alankara. In that book, these poetic figures are there. And there's a poem called Duraga Bada Banda. Duraga means horse, Bada means footsteps, and Banda means arrangement. Arrangement in the steps of a horse. That's the meaning of the uh, poetic pattern. This is the poem that they have given in that book. Okay, I'll put the same thing in the useful, understandable language. And this poem gives a solution to the Hamilton's Hamilton problem of the night. Then what the what what the poem says is you you can read the first row of the poem by following the night's movement. See, from say I have to go to Na, so you come here, Na. Then from there you have to go to Lee, you come here. 
and from that you have to go to another knee, you go like that. So the first row can be read using the horse movement. Similarly, the second row can be read using the horse movement. Then combine them, you can get the solution for the half board. Then combine it, you can get the solution for the knight's board. So this knight's calf is Hamiltonian, has been recorded as a, in the poetic form in the Sanskrit thing, even in the ninth century. This is dated as ninth century, whereas the official uh, algorithm for the chessboard problem has come only in the 19th century. So our ancestors know the solution for the Hamilton cycle problem of the nice graph is surprising. Okay, they know the solution even in the ninth century. So this is how the Knight's problem is looking at, uh, taking up. But I don't know whether it is a complete characterization of for what values of n the Knight's graph is Hamiltonian. I haven't come across any such result. I have to search again. For what values of n the Knight's graph is Hamiltonian. Okay. For the 8 cross 8 board, I have the answer. Okay. Fine. So there are several such interesting problems coming from the chessboard mathematics. So the domination theory originated in India from the chessboard covering problem. Okay. There's a very simple and surprising unsolved problem. So I'll go to the next uh, file and see where I can. Okay. Is the new screen okay? Is, I hope the screen is visible. Okay. Sir, the Fine. previous. No, sir. Yeah, it's ah. earlier one. Previous is? Uh, we can see previous one. The previous one, one is there. This one is the previous one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, new screen is not coming. No, sir. No, no, so, sir. I have to close that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me see. Or you can switch the window, sir. Let, let me see. No, no problem. Is the new screen visible now? No, not, sir. not not yet. Sir. Why? I think you're not sharing the screen. The stop is sharing. Screen. No, I am actually sharing. No problem. This is visible here for me. Uh, sir, uh, if possible, you can unshare it and then again share it. Okay. Okay. Let me go back. How to cancel the sharing? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, uh, we can see it now, sir. And Some new no... research directions in right, right. domination. So that's fine. That's fine. So now I'll I will go to the continuation, the chessboard problem, there's a surprising unsolved problem, which I have put in this slide. Okay, so I have the chessboard domination problem. I call the Queen's graph as QUN. It's a question is, is QN monotonic increasing or not? What do you think? When the chessboard becomes large, number of queens is expected to be large. Is that right? Is it obvious that yes, gamma QN yeah. less than or equal to gamma QN plus one? Yes, we expect that. Huh? You expect that? Yes. We expect that. Okay. Yes. It's fine. But surprisingly, 
this problems remains unsolved for the past 150 years no one is able to prove that gamma q n is a monotonic increasing function you can refer to the book by Haynes, Kenneth and later domination of advanced topics in page 157 the problem is mentioned and it, they say that the above problem dates back to 1850s. This would appear to be obviously true, but no proof has yet been found. For a solution to this problem, a $100 price has been offered by Professor Hedetemi. Okay. This, I'm also surprised at this situation that gamma QN is less than or equal to gamma q n plus one. It's an unsolved problem. Okay. I, will, I am trying, I am working on it now with one of my students where I have developed a tool to attack this problem. Perhaps I'll share that tool with you and perhaps one of you can, one of, one of you can help me to crack this problem. Then it will become a very uh, path-breaking result, okay? Fine. So, is gamma qn a monotonic non-increasing function? See, up to the, in the previous slide, I showed you up to n equal to 20, the number. One thing is obvious. If at all gamma qn increases, it can increase at most by 1. Is that obvious? From n class n to n plus 1 class n plus 1 board, if at all gamma increases, it can increase by at most 1. Right? That's obvious. Yes, sir. Because you, you are adding one row and one column. You put the top uh, corner in your set. That will dominate the newly added cells. So therefore, if at all gamma QUN increases, it will increase by at most one at a time. Okay, when you pass from N to N plus one, the increase can be maximum one. Okay, fine. So to tackle this problem, I have introduced a new definition very recently. I call it a gamma free set. Take a connected graph and take a subset of V. S is called a gamma free set. If there exists a gamma set D of the graph, set that D intersection S is empty. The reference itself is clear. The set S is free from a gamma set. Okay? So I call it gamma free set. There is one gamma set D, at least one gamma set D, such that S is disjoint from D. S is free from a gamma set. Then if this happens for every gamma set, I call it totally gamma free set. If it uh, if it's other extreme, S is having non-empty intersection with every gamma set, then I call it gamma fixed set. Okay, gamma free set, gamma totally free set, and gamma fixed set. I have introduced this concept following the terminology of Professor Sambhat Kumar, which he introduced long back. Okay, so S is called a gamma free set. If there is a gamma set D such that D intersection S is empty. Okay. Now let me come back to this screen's problem. This is our problem. So N class N chessboard is a graph. Okay, N class N chessboard is a graph with N square vertices. N plus one class N plus N chessboard is a graph with N plus one whole square vertices. So you added two N plus one new vertices, right? You added two n plus one new vertices when you travel from n class n to n plus one class n plus one. Take, take that two n plus one new vertices, call it s. Yes. The two, two n plus one new vertices, that is vertex set of n plus one class n plus one board minus vertex set of the n class n board is two n plus one vertices, call that set s. Yes. Call that set s. Yes. Suppose you have proved that, that S is a gamma free set. Okay, 
that yes is a gamma free set what is the meaning of that that yes the 2n plus 1 border squares okay the 2n plus 1 border squares form a gamma free set for qn plus 1 board that means there is a gamma set of qn plus 1 sitting within the n cos n board okay there is a gamma set of qn plus 1 sitting with the n cos n board because this set is gamma free gamma free means there is a gamma set whose intersection that is set is empty that means that gamma set comes within the n cos n board so within the n cos n board a gamma set of n plus 1 cos n plus 1 board is sitting which means that gamma qn is less than or equal to gamma qn plus 1 so this conjecture can be solved by an s answer if we can prove that the n the 2n plus 1 new vertices forms a gamma free set so this is the tool that i have developed to attack this problem so my question is to prove uh, to find methods of proving when a subset is a gamma free set try to find necessary condition or sufficient condition to prove that a set is a gamma free set once you prove that it's a gamma your tool to prove that a set is gamma free then i can tackle this problem so in that way the 150 year old problem can be tried okay this is the tool that i have developed so anyone is interested you can take up this problem that is try to find necessary or sufficient condition for a subset of a set to be gamma free that is all the question find necessary or sufficient condition for a subset of a graph to be gamma free okay first we take a complete graph every set is gamma free every set is gamma free because gamma set is a singleton set every singleton set is a gamma set so given any subset i can take a singleton outside which is a gamma set so you see that in the complete graph every set every subset is a gamma set except the whole set okay in the complete graph every subset is a gamma set if we take the complete bipartite graph with uh, size more than more than 3 k r comma s where r and s are bigger than or equal to 3 then one side is a gamma gamma free set one part is set is gamma free set because gamma set has two vertices one from one part other one from another part gamma is two take k r comma s the complete bipartite graph where r and s are greater than or equal to 3 gamma is two the gamma set consists of one vertex from the part is set v1 another vertex from the other part is set v2 So that is the gamma set. So if we take V one as yes, that V one is a gamma free set because no gamma set can be completely within that part H set. The remaining vertices on that part will not be dominated. When the, when R and S are greater than or equal to three, each part H set is a gamma free set. So you can easily visualize the concept of gamma free set by developing the theory of gamma free set. is very interesting because i have just coined this terminology so i wanted to share with all of you so that someone can join with me and develop the theory of gamma free set gamma totally free set then if you have a good good theory developed for, for gamma free set sufficient amount of theory to show that the 2n plus 1 vertices of the the 2n plus 1 vertices of the border squares form a gamma free set i will be completing the proof of this problem so this is a very very interesting direction for research in domination theory okay. that we call this right as some new research directions in domination okay. 
So the new direction that, that I'm posing is develop the theory of gamma free sets. I will defend the parameters, gamma free number and so on. I will defend all the parameters. I will, I will develop the whole, whole uh, concepts needed for moving further. Given a gamma free set, I, I have defined two numbers called gamma free number and upper gamma free number. That is the minimum cardinality of a maximal gamma free set and maximum cardinality of a gamma free set. Okay, so that parameters you have to read, develop the theory of gamma free set and gamma totally free set, and then see whether we have enough theory developed to tackle the uh, Queen's monotonicity problem. So this is one piece of information on gamma free sets. At this point, we can have a small discussion. Uh, sir, for... Uh, uh... For finding such a gamma free set, one must know all gamma sets. Am I right? You see, I need only to say a set is gamma free. I need to put one gamma set which is designed from this. That's all. Okay, and for totally uh, gamma set, uh, totally we, we need we need the knowledge of every gamma set. That may be more difficult. Mm -hmm. Totally so gamma for a chessboard, uh, for chessboard problem, uh, we just need ga gamma free. We need only concept. gamma free set. For the chessboard okay. problem, we need only a gamma free set. Okay. Yeah. So gamma free set, the theory can be easily developed. I am very sure about it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a tool to prove, yeah, yes, it is gamma free by some way or other, then you see that the 150 year old problem definitely can be solved. So you develop this uh, new new parameters only with the aim of tackling that problem. My goal is to tackle that big problem. And these are the tools that I have suggested for that problem. Okay. I can even put a more, more general problem that is still interesting. So we got that more general problem. I will tell you why this problem is difficult. Okay. Why it is that this problem is difficult? See, QUN is an induced subgraph of QUN plus one. Is that correct? The N cross N board subgraph is an induced subgraph of the N plus one cross N plus one board. Because if two are adjacent in the N, N board, they are also adjacent in the N plus one N plus one board. Okay? So now, I will go to the more general situation. Problem is, it is a fundamental problem. You take a graph G and a connected induced subgraph G. Take a graph G and a connected induced subgraph G. If G equal to Kn, I am going to find gamma and gamma H for the graph and the induced subgraph. You take G equal to Kn, induced subgraph is another complete graph. So gamma is one for the whole graph as well as for the induced subgraph. Okay, gamma does not change. You take the wheel on more than five vertices. There's a middle vertex which is adjacent to everything. There's a cycle of N minus one vertices and a middle vertex. This is a wheel. The cycle is an induced subgraph, right? The cycle is an induced subgraph of the wheel. Now, for the wheel, gamma is 1. For the induced subgraph, gamma is n minus 1 by 3. For the cycle, the domination number is n minus 1 by 3. So here, for the induced subgraph, gamma is going up. Okay. Whereas for a path, P18, is my path, P15 is my induced subgraph. For the path, gamma is six. For the induced subgraph, gamma is five. So if you take a connected graph, 
and they get take a connected induced subgraph gamma can go up or go down or remain same all possibilities are available okay for the induced subgraph gamma the domination number can go up as in the second example it can remain same as in the first example or it may come down all three possibilities are there i can give you a single graph where all the three types of graphs are sitting i'll give you a single graph here is a graph where g1 is a graph whose dominance number is greater than or equal to 3 g2 is any graph no restriction i add i, I add an edge join u to all vertices in g1 join v to all vertices in g2 so this is my graph for this graph gamma is 2 because u comma v forms a minimum dominating set gamma is 2 g1 is an induced subgraph g1 is an induced subgraph for this induced subgraph gamma is greater than or equal to 3 so for this induced subgraph gamma is going up then g1 union u is an induced subgraph for this induced subgraph gamma is 1 so for this induced subgraph gamma is coming down for this induced subgraph gamma is going up okay and for the induced subgraph b1 u1 v b2 gamma will be same so here is a situation where i have one induced subgraph where gamma comes down another induced subgraph gamma goes up another induced subgraph gamma remains same the same graph all the three types of graphs i am able to exhibit okay so subgraph how gamma behaves when you go to induced subgraph is a very very complicated situation only because of this complicated situation the queen's problem is not getting solved there the problem is to show that for the induced subgraph gamma is not going up see that is the queen's problem see for the queen's problem for this induced subgraph i want to say gamma is not going up in general gamma can go up so for this particular graph i want to say that gamma does not go up that is the general way of looking at the problem so i am posing the problem from different perspective okay so one perspective is induced subgraph situation for which induced for which connected induced subgraph gamma will not go up this is general problem given a graph g and a connected induced subgraph h for which connected induced subgraph gamma will not go up this is a more general problem that gives the queen problem as a very small particular case the particular graph and particular induced subgraph okay so the same problem i can i have put in several different perspective so this is this is a fundamental problem in domination theory which has not been completely settled okay so very fundamental problem given a graph given a connected graph g and find for which connected subgraph gamma h is less than or equal to gamma g for which connected induced subgraph gamma h is less than or equal to gamma g okay this is a very interesting question because all the three things are available so this is a more general way of looking at the queen's problem so queen's problem is sitting here for which induced subgraph gamma h is less than or equal to gamma g if you have some idea of this that's a that's a very small particular case okay queen's problem is a very small particular case of the general setup so i have now explained various ways of looking at the queen's problem and the possible tool for attacking the problem as the concept of gamma free set okay so this is one package of problems 
which is good for the expert to look at. If for a beginner, it may be very difficult. Problems are very fundamental in nature. Okay, very fundamental in nature. So uh, this is a complete package of a set of problems for a research uh, direction, which may lead to a path-breaking result of solving the unsolved problem. That is my motivation for presenting all these things. So we go to a new topic, or do you have any, more, any further questions on this? Different perspectives that I have given for the same problem. Okay. Fine. For for no. which classes it is settled? In the, I don't see any general theorem of this type in 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 domination theory at all. Okay. I'm not able to see any theorem giving a necessary condition or sufficient condition for such things. For singular vertex, they have done. Okay. The removal of which vertex increases the domination number. The removal of which vertex decreases. For general subset, I have not seen any any big theorem so far. Okay. That's why I'm saying it is a fundamental problem which has not been completely looked at. So for single uh, vertex, uh -huh. uh, what are what are the references or something? That is a that's a take the book fundamentals of domination in graphs by Haynes, Hedetnami, and Slater. Okay. There's one chapter called Changing and Unchanging of Domination Number. Changing okay. and Unchanging. Then okay. they're discussing when a vertex is removed, how domination number changes or remains unchanged. Yes. For single vertex, they have studied the problem. For general subsets, they have not studied the problem. That is why I say that this whole is a new new way of looking at the problem. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, would you please share this PPT so that uh, I can read it uh, thoroughly afterwards? Yes, I am going to give all the PPTs to the organizers. Okay. Thank all you, the, Thank the you, PPTs sir. that I am presenting, I will give to the organizers. They can share it with the participants. Mm -hmm. Thank because you. Sir. I would sir. like to think over it and work over it. There is no problem because I am I am open for because uh, I, I am looking at this problem with some of my students. Okay. And uh, one can work on this. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, Art of problems. Because mm -hmm. using you, this gamma free and gamma fixed, I will define the six parameters. So all the six parameters, no one has started now because I only just defined it. Mm -hmm. We can start developing the theory of these parameters. Find the parameters. Right. So it's, there's a full scope for two, two three PhD oh. thesis here. Okay? Right. That's how the whole thing comes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Fine. Uh, sir, yeah. about twins problem, uh, uh -huh. recently there was a news uh, yeah. that this problem has been settled down. That uh, one chronic, uh, one transiting. On which problem is you are talking about? Modern transit problem? Twins, uh, twins problem, twins non attacking problem. Ah. Uh, it has been settled by a Harvard postdoctoral fellow, and okay. then there was one more paper by Peter Crash uh -huh. on the archive. Uh, okay, which is quite so for non attacking yeah. twins problem is solved. Yeah, and That's that is fine. around 161 pages long. Oh, paper. I see. By uh -huh. Peter Crash. Uh, okay, okay, uh, okay. Very eminent fellow. Uh, I'll, I'll just try to uh, take the paper and see. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So these two papers are there. And in okay. fact, that news came in Quanta Magazine. Yesterday, you talked about Quanta Magazine. Uh, this uh -huh. right. This problem uh, news was there in, I think, in September. Yes, from... it's there, right. The yeah. problem is a long, long university. Long, 150, right. yeah. They, they quoted that it's a right. 150 years right. Right. long right. problem. Right. Uh, but in both cases, uh, this uh, Peter Crash uh, solution is more general, what it seems to be, which uh -huh. is quite long. 
Okay. So it okay. is there on the archive also. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. So the we don't know whether, to what extent that's going to help us to the Manitana city. Because uh, this no, is for no. non-attack. This is for any. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That is for non-attack. Yeah. So this is simple problem. Okay. Yes. Simple looking problem. problem. Yeah. This is <laughs> problem. <laughs> yeah. Right. So shall we go to the next topic? Yeah. I'll, I have so many topics, I'll take the most interesting thing. Okay. See, domination theory has been well studied for grass, but not so much for directed grass, surprisingly. Domination theory has not been so much of uh, concentration for directed graphs. Whereas we have more than 1,500 papers on domination in graphs. Whereas for digraphs, it is a handful, less than 20. Okay. So not much progress has been done in the study of domination in directed graphs. Okay. Most of the studies has been restricted to a particular problem that came from a game theory called concept of kernel. Okay, this is the uh, paper where they have studied about, there's a survey about this is given. But Chartrand introduced a very nice uh, definition of domination in directed graphs, which he called twin domination. Okay. It is proposed in 2003. In a directed graph, if you take a directed graph, take a subset of V, S is called a twin dominating set. If for every in V minus S, there are two vertices in S, may, maybe same or dis not necessarily distinct, such that one arc comes to V, another goes, goes outside V. Twin domination, okay? V1 comes into V and V2 goes outside V. So there are two vertices such that V1, V is the tail of one arc and head of the other arc. Okay. So for any vertex outside the set, there are two vertices in the dominating set such that there are two arcs V, V1 and V2, V. V is the head of one arc and tail of the other arc then it is called a twin dominating set. And the minimum cardinality of a twin dominating set is called the twin domination number of the directed graph. Okay? Why it is very interesting? See, I have already told you, domination in graphs is so extensively studied with thousands of papers. And this concept gives domination graphs as a particular case. Why? Take any graph G. Every line you put two arcs, two symmetric pair of arcs. Take any graph G, replace any H by a symmetric pair of arcs. You get a directed graph. What is the twin domination number of this directed graph? Take a graph G, I get a directed graph G star by replacing every H by a pair of arcs UV and VU. Every edge is replaced by a pair of symmetric arcs. I get a directed graph. Take the twin domination number of the directed graph G star and take the domination number of the original graph G. What do you think? Equality. Huh? You take any graph G, go to the symmetric directed graph where each edge is replaced by a symmetric pair of arcs. Take the domination number of the original graph G and twin domination number of the new directed graph G star. Are they same? I'll, I'll put the question directly. Are they same? Yes. Yes. Yes is same. <laughs> they are same. They are same. Yes. So you see that twin domination includes domination as a particular case. So you see, 
but the problem becomes very complicated because when the when the when when a only one sided arc, the denomination becomes more difficult. The theory is more difficult, but keeps the graph theory as a special case. So this is an excellent problem, excellent direction for a new research scholar to take it up. You can choose a research scholar, ask him to start uh, study the directed graph, basics, basics of directed graphs, and ask him to work on twin domination in directed graph. It'll be a very, very, very nice thing to do. Okay? It's an extremely nice problem. I, I, in my opinion, this will, if once it's developed, it will become a big book. It will become a, a, a big book in domination directed graphs. Tin domination directed graphs, a topic that can lead to a book. So I strongly recommend one research supervisor take a student and work on this topic. Twin domination in directed graphs, which gives you the whole domination theory in graphs as a special case. Okay? The, the whole domination theory is a special case because of this situation. If this is a directed graph obtained from G by replacing each X UV by a pair of symmetric cards UV and VU, then gamma G star is, the twin domination of the G star is gamma G. So the concept of twin domination has vast potential for research. It generalizes the whole domination theory. Okay. So this is one full research area which I strongly recommend for a new, new person to enter into the theory. Okay, not much published work is there. Even, even a fundamental research will be good. You can take a theorem in domination and try to see how to generalize it for the directed graph case. Yes, That's how the whole thing will go. Yes, I don't have a question. Yeah. Uh, if you take a directed graph as tournament, that ah. is for every pair of a direct uh, right, part. Right. You take a complete graph, put a orientation. Yeah, right. Then right. the twin domination number and the underlying graph of uh, tournament is uh, domination number for the underlying graph. Just is, one. Just is one. A, underlying oh, graph domination is just one. But yeah, okay. it, that's the first starting point. Let us find the twin domination number of tournaments. That is just a big research <laughs> problem. It's oh, not going oh. to be that easy. Even oh, twin right. domination number of a tournament. Yeah. It's not that easy. Okay, so okay, okay. Not that easy. Okay. Thank yeah. So here's a topic which is highly uh, promising for research. Okay. Now I'll I've got one recent topic where I have started the work. It's called certified domination. Certified domination graphs is a paper published in our AKC journal in 2020, last year. The topic, the title of the paper is certified domination. You can freely download the paper from our journal web page. Certified domination in graphs. Okay. They have uh, they have got this problem as a motivation from the current pandemic situation. See, the motivation comes is that's what it was. Uh, that's why I got attracted to this. Suppose you have a social network, you have a set of officials and set of civils. An official can give service to the civil. Okay, an official is providing service to a civil. But the other puts a condition that. Whenever an official is serving a civil Y, civil X, there must be another civil Y who observes V. In other words, the, the other civil will act as a witness and see that the official do not abuse the person. That is how he motivated the problem. Okay, so the set of officials 
form a dominating set. They are providing service to, to civil, but whenever an official provides a service to a civil, another civil is there, we suggest them to the official and uh, watches him. Serves as a witness for the quality of the service that is being provided. How to model this as a problem? That is the motivation which the authors have given for introducing this concept. Okay, to make a service mechanism more dependable. Okay, to make a service mechanism more dependable. So the uh, mathematically, they said the problem is a dominating set is a certified dominating set. If any vertex in the dominating set has either no neighbor outside or at least two neighbors outside. It should not have exactly one neighbor outside. Because if it has exactly one neighbor outside, then when the official serves that civil, there is no one to there's no one to serve as a witness. See, when an official serves a civil, there is another person serving as a witness. That means there's another vertex dominated by the vertex V. So whenever a vertex V in D dominates something outside, it should dominate at least two members. It should dominate at least two members. That is how this, this parameter was motivated by the authors. The corresponding number they called certified domination number. The first paper came in 2020 last year. Okay. And they have proved for, they give this example of a tree. See, here you see, I have chosen seven vertices. You see, V1 dominates two vertices outside. So whenever V1 serves this fellow, this fellow will be a witness. So when V2 serves one fellow, another fellow will be a witness. Similarly, V5 has four vertices as neighbors outside. So whenever V5 serves somebody, someone, some other person can serve as a witness. And these two people are put inside. So that, because if you put V6 and put don't put V7, when V6 serves V7, no, no witness will be there. So this is the certified domination test for the tree, whereas if you remove V6, it's a domination set. So certified domination number is one more than the domination number for this graph. And these are some standard results which, which has been put in that basic paper. And there are so many things. We have written the second paper on this certified domination, where you have proved that this problem is NP complete, even for uh, small families of graphs like split graphs. So second paper we have written on algorithmic aspects of certified domination. We recently communicated a third paper on certified domination. So we can download this paper and start working on certified domination in graphs. It's a new concept. Only two published papers are there. One is the base paper, another is our paper uh, dealing with algorithmic aspects. Third paper we are writing. It's almost at the point of completion. So this is called certified domination in graphs. Okay. A new parameter that has come up very recently. Okay. I am not going to the details. I'll go to one more fundamental problem, which combines domination and coloring. It was introduced by me. Then I got a collaborator to work further on this problem. Take a graph with chromatic number K. Chromatic number is minimum number of vertices, colors needed to color the vertices of the graph such that adjacent vertices get different colors. So take a graph with chromatic number K. Take a K coloring of the graph. What's a K coloring? You are giving colors to the vertices of the graph so that adjacent vertices get different colors. Take a K coloring. Take the color classes V1, V2, V3, Vk. The color classes. Each color class is an independent set. Okay? Because no two adjacent vertices receive the same color. 
So coloring the vertices of the graph is simply partitioning the vertex set into independent sets, minimum number of independent sets. I observed that at least one color class can be made a dominating set. In any k coloring of a graph with chromatic number k, at least one color class can be made a dominating set. Okay. I proved this a very simple observation. It was actually done by myself, Acharya and Valikar long back. Because you take a coloring, V1, V2, Vk. Take the first color class, V1. If it's a dominating set, my problem is already over. I have a color class which is a dominating set. Suppose V1 is not a dominating set. That means what? There is a vertex sitting in another color class which is not dominated by V1. You take that vertex and bring it and put it in the first color class it is continuing to be coloring because it's not dominated. It continues to be independent. So transfer that vertex from one color class to the first color class. After tra transferring this vertex, look at the new color class. If it is dominating, my problem is complete. Otherwise, go and transfer another vertex. So keep transferring vertices from other color classes, one after the other, so that the first color class will ultimately become a dominating set. So this is how I combined domination and coloring. So in any graph with chromatic number k, given any k coloring of the graph, I can recolor the vertices so that at least one color class can become a dominating set. Then I ask the question, what is the maximum number of color classes that can be made dominating sets? I called it dominating color number because it combines domination and coloring. Dominating color number. I denoted this by the symbol D suffix chi. D standing for dominating, chi standing for color. And this number lies between one and chi. There are graphs where all color classes are dominating, like complete bipartite graph. You only two color classes, both color classes are dominating. Complete graph, n color classes, every color class is dominating. Whereas, if you take a triangle with pendant at every vertex, take a triangle with pendant at every vertex, K3, corona K1. What is chromatic number of this graph? Three. Because triangle is there. Corona with a pendant at every point. Chromatic number is three. Domination number is also three. Because there are three pendant vertices. Domination number is also three. Chromatic number is also three. Therefore, only one color class can be made a dominating set. So D k equal to one for this graph. So the, dom the dominating color number can be anywhere between 1 and chi. I have given an example where it can be 1, where it can be chi. So this is a parameter which I introduced in 2011. This is the second paper where we have put some interesting results on this parameter. Some afterwards, two, three papers came up. A new parameter connecting coloring and domination. If you want an unsolved problem, go to the NC version of this concept that seems to be very, very interesting and very challenging. Try to develop the NC version of this concept. Because NC domination is well studied, its coloring is well studied. You know, its coloring is the famous Weising's theorem which says that the chromatic number is either de delta or delta plus one, the maximum degree or the maximum degree plus one. So try to develop this theory for edge coloring. That is again a very challenging problem. It can come for a, it can it is not for a PhD thesis. Okay? It is not for a PhD thesis. 
very deep problem. But one needs a lot of maturity to uh, work on such problems. Because you must be familiar both with the theory of coloring and the theory of domination. Both are very big, very big, uh, well-developed theory. Domination is a well-developed theory. Coloring is also a well-developed theory. Both theory has a lot of applications. So combining them is, in a way, good. Combining two, two well-developed areas is, in a way, good. Okay. But to work further, you, you have to be familiar with what is already known in both areas. That's all the idea. So this is a combination of domination and coloring. OK? Good. There are so many other things. I think I will uh, I'll wait for questions now. Because I can't cover all the things now. It's a fundamental thing which I have done. Or, uh, what's called Nardos Gardam type result. But then you have, we shall not go through that. So shall we spend time on questions? Or I, I will say a brief thing about this. At least you can go, one can go through the survey paper. Nardos Gardam type result deals with gamma, a, a, a graph parameter for a graph and its complement. Take a graph and its complement. It gives bound for the sum and the product of uh, the numbers, like something like gamma plus gamma bar, bound for lower and upper bound. The product gamma, gamma bar, lower and upper bound. Such type of result is called Nardos Gardam type result. That is providing bounds for the sum and product of a graph parameter. Sum and product of the values of the graph and its complement. Such a result is called Nardos Gardam type result because the first such result was presented by. Nardos and Gordon for the chromatic number. So afterwards, all results of this type are called Nardos Gordon type results. And a complete survey of Nardos Gordon type results is given here in 80 page survey, giving all the known Nardos Gordon type results, which, ap which appeared in discrete applied mathematics in 2013. A full survey of all the known Nardos Gardam type results and some of the unsolved problems. I have identified some fundamental unsolved problems using this Nardos Gardam type for domination theory. I will start working some fundamental problem using Nardos Gardam type result for lamination. Because this is the first known result. Myself and my student substantially improved this result by putting a condition that if both G and G bar have no isolated vertices, the bound can be substantially improved. This was done by my second PhD student where we proved that gamma if G and G bar have no isolated vertices, gamma plus gamma bar less than or equal to n by 2 plus 2. So from n plus 1, I brought it down to n by 2 plus 2. Okay, Substantial improvement in the bound by putting a small extra condition that G and G bar have no isolated vertices. So okay, the original bound Okay. the original bound, n plus 1. Why, why I got this is, the original bound is reached only for the complete graph. The original bound is actually reached only for the complete graph. So I thought for other graphs it will improve. That was the motivation for me. So by doing that, I was able to manage to get this improvement in a big way. Then people started working. This is equal to saying if both delta and delta bar greater than or equal to 1. 
No isolate means what? Delta is not zero. Minimum degree is not zero. So if the minimum degree is greater than or equal to one, gamma plus gamma bar is less than or equal to n by two plus two. So people ask, suppose minimum degree is greater than or equal to two, will the bound improve still further? Yes, they proved that. If the minimum degree is both greater than or equal to two, the bound is three n by five plus three. Okay, further improvement. N by two became two by two n by five plus three. Then we ask, both are greater than or equal to three. It will still improve. Yes, people said if both are greater than or equal to three, it is three n by eight by two. Still came down. Then people went further. Suppose both are greater than or equal to four. It comes to four n by eleven plus two. Still further. But every time some exceptions were there. I looked at all these things. I found that there is a pattern sitting there. So I formulated the conjecture. For five, it is five n by four plus two. So I looked at the pattern and I posed the conjecture that if G is a connected graph such that both G and G bar have minimum degree greater than or equal to K, then gamma plus gamma bar less than or equal to Kn by 3K minus 1 plus 2. When you put K equal to 1, it is 1 by 2, N by 2 plus 2, my theorem comes as corollary. For k equal to 1, it is my theorem. For k equal to 6, they have proved 16 by 7 plus 2. 16 by 17 plus 2. You put k equal to 6 here, 6 n, 18 minus 1, 17. So you see, this is 16 by 17 by 2. For k equal to 5, they have 5 n by 14. For delta equal to 5, 5n by 14. So you put 5 here, 5, 3, 15 minus 1, 14. So all the known theorems is a special case of this conjecture. So I strongly believe that this conjecture is going to be true. Because we have all the theorems supporting our conjecture up to n equal to 6, they have proved in separate research papers. n equal to 6 is one research paper. n equal to 5 is another paper. n equal to uh, four is another paper. Okay. N equal to three is another paper. N equal to two is one paper. N equal to one is my paper. So all these papers support the conjecture that gamma G plus gamma G are less than two floor of Kn by 3K minus 1 plus 2 with a few exceptions. Because every n, there are some exceptions. Okay? For all the theorems, there are some exceptions. Let's say I put with a few exceptions, this conjecture is likely to be true. So it's a very good problem which we can try. Okay? So I, I think this is the right time to stop for our discussions. I have put enough number of problems to work. Okay. Good. So it stops sharing now. So ready for questions or discussions. Sir, uh, this is Paul Kumar. So, yeah. uh, is there any relation between uh, ma maximum matching and minimum covering? Is there any study between these two? See, covering and independence are complement of each other in the vertex case. Because oh, okay. you, you, oh. you take a vertex cover. Vertex cover yes. means every edge has one end in yes. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Every edge has one end in yes. Such a thing is called a vertex cover. Yes. If something is a vertex cover, its complement is an independent set. Independent set, yeah. Conversely, yeah. if something is independent, the complement is a vertex cover. Yeah. We call it okay. a galite type process. Okay, so the covering number plus independence number will be equal to n. The number yeah, right. So similar okay. thing will be there for matching and the edge cover. Okay, so thank you.
sir, uh, for gamma free graph, uh, these three uh, gamma free set, gamma free set, yeah, three uh, uh, one equality and two inequalities you uh, mentioned right. there. Right. So for some particular or we can say special classes of graphs, uh, whether it is known, like say some work on I will share that work with you. Let us okay. discuss more seriously on that. Okay. okay. There's a lot of lot of things to be done there. Okay. Let me, if you rope in a student, mm -hmm. we, can, we can go for a thesis. Okay. We'll go towards the uh, Queen's problem. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I gave it to a student, but she's not making big progress. Not my direct student. Some uh -huh. student working with Sarlax, another uh, guy. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So it was a nice lecture. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Too many, too many problems you have posed uh, for study. So definitely, someone will pick up at least one, yeah. and yeah. will proceed. Let us see. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, shall we close now? Or is there one? Over to you. Shall I give a lot of thanks? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Yes, yes. Sir. Um, in this session, uh, we enjoyed a lot uh, for the, uh, from the lecture of uh, Professor Isma Armukhan. Uh, he had discussed about the domination number, total domination number, independent domination number for solving um, for chessboard problems. He also discussed the gamma free sets, to totally gamma free sets, gamma fixed sets twin domination in diagrams and certified domination in graphs, which are all very useful for us. And really uh, thankful to uh, Professor Arman, sir. And also uh, he had this, uh, he had given some problems, uh, new problems uh, for doing research for us. It also very really, uh, helpful for us to for do further research. And uh, for all, the, all these things, uh, uh, on behalf of uh, all participants, I, uh, I, uh, I propose my uh, heartful thanks to Professor Arman, sir for spending time with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you.